I spent $200 at Mega Brain Comics in Rhinebeck, New York. What did I go home with? All right, guys, we've got books to talk about today. We've got a new comic shop to talk about today. But first, we're going to talk about what not Instagram. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Give me a follow on all that social media. I'm also on Twitter. Everything is very Gary underscore comics on what not every Tuesday night at 830. I go live. My man Erod 212 starts at seven o'clock to 830. I'm from 830 to 10. And then at 10 o'clock, Davis Ryder takes over. That is our Tuesday night lineup uh, with with that. That's it for all that stuff. Let's get into the real video here. So I actually went up to Rhinebeck to go to the Dutchess County Fair, which if anybody in New York or anybody in the Hudson Valley knows, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, Spent a few hours up there, ate some great food, played some carny games, and uh, on the way home, we stopped by another comic shop. Not my necessarily my LCS. My LCS is Alterniverse, but uh, this is a comic shop up in Rhinebeck, New York called Mega Brain Comics. I was able to do a quick tour, quick video, also uh, picked up some stuff, which we will talk about. Uh, I do have to do a voiceover, though, so I've been, I, I've been liking to like actually record and talk while I'm recording instead of doing a voiceover. Unfortunately, for this video, they had a lot of music playing, and I can't have music in the background of the video, so I did a voiceover. So without further ado, let's go through the tour of the shop, and then we'll talk about what I picked up. All right, guys, we are at Mega Brain Comics in Rhinebeck, New York. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do a voiceover once I walk in and record. The reason is they have music playing. Oh, look what we got up there. A little Frankie Ray. I'll have to ask about that book. But they have music playing in there, so I, I can't have that in my video. Paul Rudd does stop in time to time, as well as Jeffrey Dean Morgan. So, um, all right, we're going to go in. Oh, yes, look, speaking of Jeffrey Dean Morgan, there you go. So we're gonna go in here, and unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to switch it over to a voiceover. All right, guys. So here we go. We are walking into Mega Brain Comics, and you immediately see a lot of trades and our new releases. Two racks of new releases, and more trades. Just a lot of whether it's hardcover, or paperback, a lot of books. Here are some more. We do have some wall books back here. Yes, you see a hole on the wall. That is something I picked up. We'll get into that later in the video. Some toys. There are some some more toys, miscellaneous stuff. And there's some. And I forgot to record in the display case under the register. There are some slabs books. Nothing there that I wanted to pick up. Some magnets and some more odds and ends, miscellaneous kind of stuff. Some Pokemon stuff. Some game, board games, adult games, child games, and some t-shirts. I didn't really look too closely at the t-shirts, actually, to see if there was anything for me. But there are a good variety. You got the lunch boxes up top, and then some socks. And again, I can't express this enough. Just a variety of different stuff for a comic shop. More books, hardcovers, paperback, children's books on the spinner rack. Big stuff there. And then you can see on this back wall, again, you got games on the bottom. You have more books on the wall. And more books on the shelf here. We're going to start coming up to the back issues, which you can see on your right and then right in front of you. Here's a rack of Funkos. Whole big stand, actually. I didn't look through those either. Didn't have a whole lot of time. Here's some back issues, and then you see a lot underneath there, as well as some vinyl records. And more Funkos down there. I like those wooden boxes, though. More board games, more odds and ends, and here are some back issues. I did pull some stuff out of here that we will go through again at the end of the video. Um, unfortunately, I wanted to go back and grab this, and I forgot to. Whoops. It happens. And more books and toys. And here is the adult section. Good size adult section. And more, more trades and some posters. So 
Guys, a little bit of everything. And then to the right there, if you could just see the Mad Magazines, that's a magazine rack right here. And we've got some handheld games. And here's something a little bit different, a small arcade in the back of the comic shop. Some vintage stuff, nothing really newer. Oh, little Paul, another Paul Rudd signature. Stay small. <laughs> you have some pinball. I was actually surprised to see how busy it was back in the arcade. I didn't think it would be as busy as it was. And like as I was, as I was recording, more and more people just headed back there. And you got to think with some of these classic games, some of the younger kids have never played them. Primal Rage. Oh, man. I know some of you guys remember that. And then the next one, I know some of you guys remember Popeye. Oh, man. Joust. Pretty cool stuff. Now, let's go over what I purchased. All right, you guys got a good tour of this comic shop. What's cool is they actually have an arcade in the back, something you don't see too, too often. A lot of miscellaneous stuff. I would say there's probably 50% comics in that store, not trades and stuff like that, but actual regular back issues and new books. I would say maybe 50% of that store is comic books. Maybe not even. You guys saw it. You saw the tour, so you tell me. But I go, I did go in there and I found some, some diamonds in the rough. I did spend about $200 on a few books that I wanted to talk about. I probably could have spent more and kept digging, but... I yeah, just spent the day at the fair. I was tired. I was ready to go home. The kids were exhausted. So without further ado, let's get into this thing. All right. So first book I want to talk about was Incredible Hulk 330. Uh, this is McFarlane. I believe it's the first McFarlane on Marvel. I'm almost positive. Uh, I got this for a, a good price. Again, 200 for the lot. Infinite Crisis number three. This is that variant, the sketch variant. Awesome book. Very important. Keep an eye out on this. Good pen. Is this Jim Lee? It is Jim Lee. It looks like Jim Lee. This is Jim Lee pencils. All right. Picked up some X-Men stuff. Do I want to talk about the X-Men? Yeah, pretty much the rest of the stuff is X-Men. First thing I picked up was X-Men 24. You'll probably see this in an upcoming whatnot auction or it already happened and that's it. It's gone. Um, this is probably about a 4-0. Again, 200 for the whole lot. No discount, no deal, just... This is what I paid. Another Silver Age. X-Men, eh, it's like a bronze. Eh, it's on the cusp here. X-Men number 59. Neil Adams book here. Uh, probably about a 3.5. 3.0, 3.5. Nothing super high grade. Uh, let's see. Only four more books to talk about. Here is X-Men 239. This is actually the first Mr. Sinister cover. Pairs really, really well with X-Men 221, which is the first Mr. Sinister. Don't sleep on this book. Everything in the hobby has been going down in price. This one has as well. And call me crazy, but I feel like when the X-Men do hit the big screen, when they do get a movie, Mr. Sinister is a great potential first villain. We haven't seen him yet in any of the Fox movies. He's a great villain. Why not? Enough with the juggernaut. We don't really need Magneto, in my opinion, right away. You can build up to characters like that. Give us Sinister. I think that would be awesome. Another X-Men book here. X-Men 142, the second half of Days of Future Past. Uh, this one's actually in pretty good shape. It's probably about a 9-0. Could use a press, but I would say a 9-0. The Sinister is probably like a 9-2 to a 9-4 and does need a press. Does have a big dog ear, a little bit of a staining, but maybe it's more like an 8. That staining might make it an 8. All right, last but not least, the book I felt like I got the best deal on, but, but needs the most work. It does need significant pressing, but when it does, this book will probably hit about an 8.5 to a 9.0. In its current state, I would say it's like a 7.0. Again, needs a lot of work. Uh, this is a Hulk 340. We love this cover, guys. This is the McFarlane cover. It's been homage, I don't know how many times. I think McFarlane's doing a CGC signing too. Uh, I've seen him sign a lot of these books. My favorite signature though is actually on the blades. He'll put like Todd and then McFarlane in the other one. Uh, great, I you know, fair book. 
fair price. It does need work. The same with the Sinister. These things do need pressing. I mean, all these books need pressing. But again, $200 for the entire lot. That was after tax and all. I feel like I did pretty well. And I also feel like there's still more stuff to find in there. I just didn't have the time to dig, dig, and dig. But I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of the shop. Hope you guys liked what I picked up. I don't know. Um, all in all, that's it for this video. I want to say thank you for watching. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. How did I do? Think I did well? Not whatever you believe, whatever you think. Give me a shout out. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, and that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as always, keep it comics.